Super cool little buddy to show us. Where is it? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Did it just pop out of your tacit mark? Hmm. Smells good. So, yeah. is this how it first showed up when you guys were in the Norfolk Barrens? Yeah, back then. As I fought off those tacit discords, a burst of energy erupted from that statue. Two forces clashed and collided, and later, one of them emerged victorious, vanquishing the other in a violent clash. General Jian and Rover later told me it was this little thing coming out of Rover's body. It was blocking or even consuming the overflow of Thrinodian power. It reminded me of how Rover once absorbed frequency energy with his body in a similar fashion. So, we took him to the academy for a checkup with Baiji. Apparently, this little one is what we had detected before. It's a speculated space or organism hidden inside your body. Now we finally know. It shares similar frequencies with tacit discord's reverberations. It resembles an echo processed by the data bank, stored inside your body instead of a terminal. In other words, it's your own echo, captured or absorbed at some point. Without you, it can't manifest. That's why Baiji couldn't confirm just how you absorbed that echo back then. Was it you? Was it the little one? Or maybe the two of you together? And Baija discovered more after analyzing your spectrums. She found a new power source within you, similar to the crownless, but even stronger. This power comes from the tacit discord you defeated in Norfolk Barrens. So, the excess energy this little thing had consumed somehow ended up in your body, available at your disposal. In other words, there is a deeper connection between the two of you. Or, according to Baiji, it's a convergent codependency. Uh, to put it simply, you are connected. While you are two separate individuals, your energies and vitals can affect each other, for better or for worse. You may even feel each other's emotions. The bond between you and this creature is symbiotic. As it strengthens, so do you. However, if one is harmed, the other suffers. Fortunately, since it can't ever leave your side, it's not an easy target for attackers. And if they do strike, it can seek shelter inside your body for safety. Okay, now that's pretty much it. Baija was going to explain it to you herself, but she has to go check on a newly appeared Sonora Sphere in Zhaozhou. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, this is too much information for me to process. Mm. Let me get this straight. Mm. So, it helped Rover fight mm. off the Trinodian? Huh? Seriously? Mm. This teeny tiny thing mm -hmm. could do that? <laughs> Seems unlikely. Hmm. Don't look down on me. You'll regret it when you learn what I'm capable of. That poker-faced researcher was absolutely shocked when she examined me. <laughs> Said I'm not just any echo. I'm a super-duper cool one. Rarest of them all. <laughs> yeah, 
no way Baija talks like that. She's more of a data dumb kind of person. Super duper cool? <laughs> nah, too extra for her. Seems like you're trying to boost your ego a bit. Oh, actually, while those aren't Baija's exact words, that is what she meant. She mentioned highly intelligent echoes that connect on their own in other countries. Said they are involved in every aspect of human life with unique abilities beyond our imagination. Those echoes are rare though. Neither I nor Baiji, an eco-acoustics expert, have ever seen one in person. But this little thing here? It could be one of those foreign echoes. Yeah, makes sense. Now we just gotta figure out where it came from. Who knows? We may find other cool echoes in that place. Where exactly he absorbed you? Huh? How am I supposed to know? Why don't you just ask him? It happened before he lost all memories, so we have to ask you. But even if Echoes can have memories, they probably wouldn't remember things earlier than their first manifestation. I wonder if that's the case with this little one, too. Aha! Finally! Someone with common sense! That green-haired, serious guy asked me a similar question. Sorry to disappoint, but I really don't remember anything before I showed up. Hmm, maybe... Maybe I was just sleeping inside him this whole time. So of course I don't remember. Sleeping? Seriously? It's been so long. All those happenings, all that fighting, and you didn't hear anything? Well, wow, that's... Your sleeping quality is really something. Uh, so you've got privacy to be respected. <laughs> Don't worry. Your body sound insulation is amazing. Dive into it, and everything goes quiet. The only problem is, I never know when I'll wake up again. And when I do wake up, I get tired, and hungry, fast. So I have to crawl back in for more rest. I know. It's all because I'm not eating enough. That's why you kept disappearing. He went back to sleep from lack of energy. Makes sense. Regular echoes need to be powered by the terminal, too. Hmm. I thought you'd be really different from the usual ones we see. Turns out you share a lot in common. So you probably don't know your denomination or a nickname. No wonder everyone's been calling you the little one. Denomination? What's that? The universally agreed terms for special echoes, like names for humans. They're named based on their characteristics, abilities, and places of origin. 
my denomination. It's... It's... I don't know. Do I not have a name at all? What? No way. No way. That's not fair. If all the special echoes have names, how can I not have one? I don't want to be called the little one all the time. It doesn't sound cool at all. How about this? You help me come up with a name, and I will let you have some of the food. Oh. <laughs> There's nothing left. Uh, next time, next time, I'll definitely say some for you. Just, uh, just give me a name. Please. A name? Now? Yes, I want it now. Look, your name's Chisha, your name's Yang Yang, and you, uh, your name is... Hey. That sounds interesting. Wait, didn't you forget everything? How do you still remember? With your old name and memories all gone, it's a good idea to go with a new one. It makes everything more convenient and represents a fresh start. She said, every one of you has a name, and I want one for myself, too. I'm really not asking much. I just want a name that sounds a little cool, a little special, and epic, and super smoking. Names are a big deal, you know. Like once you have one, it's stuck with you for life. Gotta make sure it's a good one. Can't have people not scared of me when they hear it. No time for regrets here. That's true. Let's see. You want a cool one. What about Echo the Invincible? What do you say? Nah, nah, -uh. absolutely no. That's too straightforward. It's it's no better than calling me the little one. Hey, it makes every difference in the world. I am Echo the Invincible. That's what a hero play character would say as their transformation call. Or uh, or maybe since you can fly and you've got those long ears, why don't you call yourself a uh, righteous raptor or valor hawk? Flying fury? No. Absolutely no. Why do they all sound so cringy? Why? I love it when people call me the Jinjo Speedster. Doesn't that sound awesome? Sure, if you say so. Anyway, they all sound like anything but my name. Absolutely no. come up with a good... Wait, why does it sound so random? You didn't just pick two random syllables, did you? So, 
Is it because I've been saying absolutely no a lot? Ugh. I meant to tease it as a joke, but I can tell it's upset now. On second thought, a name is indeed very important. Maybe I'll have to come up with a different one. Uh, Abby. Abra. Abraxas? What's wrong? What are you muttering about? Abra. What? Sounds like you're reading a spell. Uh, I don't know, but I just have this feeling that this is what my name should be. Okay, ready? Abby. I like the sound of that. <laughs> That's my name. Of course I like it. You came up with it for me. I was just trying to get used to it, that's all. Besides, I feel attached to this name now. <laughs> My name is Abby. You will not call me the little one again. Sure, we won't. Got it. Well, that didn't work out. I was hoping we could get some answers from the little, I mean, from Abby, but now we're back at square one. I really thought we could figure out where Abby came from. It might not lead us to other special echoes, but it's at least a starting point to uncover Rover's past. Then we'll have something to do before asking Madam Magistrate and our Sentinel about it again. Maybe we can start with Abby's special abilities instead. Each special echo has a unique ability. We can compare what Abby does with our records of other echoes to see where they came from. Besides, it was Abby's power that helped Rover defeat the Thranodian, I suppose. Why do you sound so unsure? Didn't you see it all with your own eyes? show us again? I'm super curious how you did that. Who knows? We might learn something. Well, since you asked, I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> but this place is too crowded. Let's move to that open spot over there. All right, him. <laughs> All eyes on me. Again, just you see. Uh, what? Did something happen? Just a little slip, that's all. I can do it. You gotta trust me. Back then, I just stood in front of him, and that big bad Thranodian monster thing just... Just... what? So... 
you didn't really do anything. Huh? No, I... I definitely did something. Like I said, I was asleep. And then all of a sudden, I smelled something really yummy. Coming closer and closer. Uh, it was like nothing I ever smelled before. I didn't have time to think. I just had to show up and reach out for it. So maybe Abby's power activates automatically under certain circumstances. Perhaps Abby can't control it yet. Yeah, it looks that way. You can't even hold your shape for very long yet. Hey, hey, hey! Stop looking down on me! Like I said, it was just a little slip. Really? But I think about it. I just stood there and did nothing and ended up beating a Thranodian. Imagine what I could do if I actually tried. Hey, Rover, get behind me next time we run into anything, okay? I'll keep you safe. Promise. You're so real for that, Abby. Heh, <laughs> you bet. I said I'm super strong. I'll protect him. That's very reassuring to hear, but... It seems we're stuck again. I can't think of anything else to check out. Knew it. Nothing about Rover's ever gonna be easy to figure out. Maybe we should bring Bai Jack, Mr. Shangri, Yao, and all the researchers in Jinjo? No, in the entire Huang Long together? They'll do a nice and thorough examination on Abby, and then. Absolutely no! I said no! Told that poker faced researcher already! I'll make it clear I am to stay with Rover. I agree. Abby cannot leave Rover's side, but we can't just trap him here for research. Where did you absorb Abby? What are Abby's powers? And what exactly happened between you two? There are so many questions we can't figure out yet. Our sentinel, Joy, can look into the future. Nothing ever deviates from its predictions. It has already sort of guided you to the Norful Barons through Madame Magistrate's messages, right? Now that the Thranodian crisis is over, perhaps you can consult our Magistrate and our sentinel again. I'm sure they can offer you some more useful guidance. Relax, relax. You have me now, remember? Meeting up with that Jinshi person, getting your memories back. I've got you. Speaking of that, so this Sentinel can predict the future? That sounds cool. The name Jue sounds pretty cool too. It's almost as cool as mine. What does it look like? Where is it? Since we're paying it a visit, this sentinel should treat us with food, right? Mmm. I wonder how the food's gonna taste. Our sentinel protects every one of us. Of course it's cool. But why are you talking about food again? Didn't you just stuff your face? What, is your stomach a black hole? I can't help it. I'm always starving.